This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. And today I wanted to talk about how Bitcoin scales, in this case, using a new protocol called Fediment. So as we all know, the Bitcoin base layer can only handle about seven transactions per second, seven TPS. This isn't too bad, especially since that's comparable to Fedwire, which is about nine transactions per second. And this is one of the trade-offs that Satoshi made in order to ensure that Bitcoin could be a decentralized, secure, and neutral base layer for global money. If you make your money highly centralized like PayPal, you can also make it really, really fast. But then you have to deal with the censorship and control that comes from centralization and control and capture by a few insiders. So with such slow TPS transactions per second, how exactly does Bitcoin expect to scale to billions of people using it? Well, one way that Bitcoin scales is by having each transaction on the base layer secure more value. So back in 2012, an average single transaction on the Bitcoin blockchain might secure $5. In other words, one Bitcoin worth of value. In 2032, an average single transaction might secure $5 million, one Bitcoin of value. Bitcoin also scales through faster, cheaper, more private layer two solutions like the Lightning Network. And I'll link to this video in the description notes below if you wanna learn more about Lightning. But today we're gonna to talk about another scaling solution called Fediment. Fediment is an open source protocol that allows people to create federated Chalmian mints on Bitcoin and more on that in a minute. Fedi itself is a private company building a software product using this open protocol called Fediment. So we have Fediment and Fedi, the private company. And I think this is actually a really, really big deal and I haven't been as excited about a new protocol in a really long time. So here's how it works. If you use the company, Fedi Software, this allows you to set up a quote unquote federation, which is controlled by trusted members of your own community, which are called guardians. Or you can use the open source Fedi Mint protocol for free and write your own software that does this. So there's, this is the option and this will create a lot of competition, which is good for the consumer. So you set up a federation controlled by trusted members of your community. The community in question might be a large extended family, a village, a tribe, a club, a neighborhood, an online community, a Bitcoin conference, for example, as we're going to see. And the guardians of this federation that you set up will be people from the community that you already know and that you are probably already trusting with growing your food, babysitting your kids, watching your house when you travel. If any of you are holding Bitcoin for less tech savvy members of your family, for the very young or the very old, you can understand how this might work. So these guardians of the Federation are also signers of an M of N multi-sig setup. So for example, you need seven out of 10 village elders, if they're the guardians of your Federation, to sign a Bitcoin transaction to move the money. One way of thinking of federations is as an online space where members can use their smartphones to message each other, to send each other money, store sensitive individual or community data in an encrypted manner. But rather than trusting Brian Armstrong of Coinbase or Sam Bankman Fried of FTX to hold your Bitcoin, you're trusting people that you already know and trust in real life. And if they steal from you or do something wrong, they will be ostracized from the community and lose access and lose social capital. So that's a strong incentive against bad behavior, along with the multi-sig setup, which means that multiple guardians would need to collude to hurt you. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to hit that subscribe button. That would really help out the channel and its reach. So let's say that you join your local village federation by simply, you download the Fedi app on your phone, you scan a QR code invitation from your community, and then you are part of the federation. You may also choose to send in, let's say 100,000 sats. One Bitcoin is comprised of 100 million sats, so 100,000 sats is about $30 today. And then what happens to those sats or satoshis is they immediately get secured by the multi-sig setup on chain. And then the federation issues you eCash, which is also denominated in sats or satoshis that you can use to pay people inside of the federation. So now you can use that eCash to pay the local butcher, the local farmer, the artist, or a family member who are also part of the federation. And these eCash payments within the federation are basically free and instant. At some point, Fedi may charge a couple of basis points as I understand it 
per transaction, but it'll still be very, very low transaction fees, much lower than we have certainly with credit cards these days. And here's another amazing thing. If your phone happens to be offline, you can still pay people successfully using this eCash since Chami and eCash is a bearer asset and you can just hold it on your phone and use it without needing an internet connection. So that's one answer to people who wonder how Bitcoin might work if the local internet is down. Now it's important to note that this eCash within the Federation is not an altcoin. It is a version of Bitcoin and it can at all times be cryptographically proven to be fully backed by real Bitcoin that is being held in that multi-sig address by the Federation. And anytime you want, you can ask the guardians to convert your unspent eCash back into SATs and then withdraw it to self-custody either through an on-chain payment using the base layer of Bitcoin or using the Lightning Network. Now try to imagine a world of thousands of federations, maybe even millions of federations, different communities, each linked to each other using the Lightning Network. Each of these federations you can visualize as being like an island, a community, and then all the communities and islands are linked by the Lightning Network. You can also think of a federation as something like a cross between a community bank that holds your money and a Facebook group where you have your social activity, but obviously infinitely better because your local community's money and online data is secured by local people rather than trusting big banks or bankers or big tech. I think this is exactly how we increase Bitcoin adoption globally. Here's another plus. The guardians of the federation cannot see how much Bitcoin you hold inside the Fediment or what transactions you are making with people inside of the Federation. So this is what we mean when we say by making Bitcoin usage more private at higher layers. Now, Federations can also compete globally for members, obviously. Let a million Federations bloom. This is healthy free market competition. So unlike having just a few large global exchanges like Coinbase and Binance, where non-tech savvy people store their Bitcoin or even worse, BlockFi, BlockFi and Celsius, instead you're gonna use a Federation that you trust or federations that you trust and that treat you well and that compete for your business. And thanks to the Lightning Network and the Bitcoin Network, each federation, as we said, is interoperable with every other federation. It's very easy to move between them using the Lightning Network. Another nice thing about having lots of federations, it makes it really difficult for any government to go after them. So governments and regulators may not even know who the members and guardians of each federation are. And if they shut down one federation in a certain locale through force or regulatory action, 10 more new federations can spring up in its place. And a federation can be in a different country or jurisdiction with more friendly regulations. You could have the guardians of the federation be in different jurisdictions as well. A federation can obviously contain members from every region, any region of the world. If you extend this, you can begin to imagine a world in which the majority of Bitcoin is stored on 100,000 different federations scattered around the world, rather than being concentrated on large exchanges like Binance or Coinbase. Now, if you're a serious Bitcoiner, you'll probably still have most of your Bitcoin in self-custody, either single SIG or multi-SIG on a hardware wallet in cold storage, but you may also choose to send some of your Bitcoin to a local federation, your local village, your local neighborhoods federation, for example, for everyday purchases, or you may choose to earn eCash, which is of course convertible, as we said, to on-chain BTC or Lightning BTC at any time. You may choose to earn eCash by providing goods and services to Federation members. And then when you have enough eCash built up inside the Federation, you can always withdraw it to self-custody and your hardware wallet. One cool thing is, as I understand it, you can run any kind of software inside of a Federation like this which is even more exciting and makes this project even more extensible. If you want to read more about the protocol itself, you can go to fediment.org, which I'll link to in the description notes below. This word fediment comes from sort of a, a word smash of federated Chalmian mint, and it's called a Chalmian mint. It's called Chalmian eCash. It was conceived of by David Chalm in the 1980s, and his version of DigiCash or eCash was actually almost included in an early version of the Windows operating system. We can imagine how different history would have been if that had happened. Uh, but as I understand it, David Chom wanted a little too much money from Bill Gates and it never, it never happened. But this is an idea whose time has come. It did not work when you had to back it with US dollars, but it will work if you can back it with Bitcoin. If you wanna learn more about the company that is building on this protocol, it's Fedi. 
uh, Fetty.xyz, and I'll link to that in the description notes below. Fetty, the company, was founded by three people, by Eric Sirion, by Obi Nuasu, and by Justin Moon. And so it'll be very exciting to see what they do with this. They launched a version of this to demonstrate to people at the uh, Prague Bitcoin conference where people used it to chat with each other, to send and receive sats and buy stuff when they're at the Bitcoin Prague conference. So I'll link to that in the description notes below. I know there are gonna be a lot of questions about Bitcoin custody and the trade-offs involved. Why in the world would you wanna give your Bitcoin to a federation? And I think we have to think about it in these terms. So you first have your centralized third-party custody done by people you don't know personally. And this has been the model for most people where Sam Bankman-Fried holds your Bitcoin or Celsius or BlockFi or Coinbase. And this is always a bad idea. This is where most Bitcoin, how most Bitcoin, I believe, is still being held in third-party custodians who don't have to give you your Bitcoin back if they choose not to or if the government tells them not to. So this is always a bad idea, this sort of centralized third-party custody where you don't really know the people who are holding your Bitcoin and you're forced to trust them. That's always a bad idea. Then at the other end of the spectrum, we have self-custody. You hold your own Bitcoin on a hardware wallet. This is always a good idea, but not everyone will do it, as we said at the beginning of this video. Very young people, very old people, very non-tech savvy people. And so Fediment is a sort of in the middle of this. It's a compromise where the guardians are people that you already trust both individually and you trust not to collude against you and steal your Bitcoin. Now you may turn out to have been wrong to trust them. They may end up stealing your Bitcoin, but they do have uh, social capital to lose where Sam Bankman-Fried is on the other side of a computer terminal. He doesn't really care about you and you don't really know him. So this is the difference when you have people, trusted people from your community running a federation. And again, as we said, when you reach a certain amount of Bitcoin or SATs within the Federation in the form of eCash, it's probably wise to ask to withdraw it and hold it on a hardware wallet in self-custody if you're able to do this. So one way of visualizing this is your hardware wallet, again, is your long-term savings. That's like your savings account. And then the Federation or Fediment could be like your checking account where you spend money within the community. And again, you could be part of a number of different federations. You could have the federation where you do your grocery shop shopping at organic grocery stores. You could have the federation where all the ranchers are, where all the farmers are, where all the artists are, and the musicians, etc. And in this way, I think this is a way of bringing Bitcoin adoption to many, many more people in the world and really helping it to spread and to be used in a decentralized, localized manner. So I'm very excited about Fediment, and I'm excited to see what the guys at Fetty continue to roll out. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below, especially what you think about Fetty, Federations, and Fediment. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.